the sewing room. I didn't really film anything yesterday, but I did make something. My creation is being used for its intended purpose. <laughs> it's my old dressing gown, and these are the arms that I sewed together there, and they've really, really stuffed quite with quite hard, like as full as I could get it, and the rest is very squishy. But this is also every project that I've made from my teal wool coat to the navy butterfly dress that I finished yesterday. And she voluntarily got in! Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've seen her properly happy and settled down here. I mean, I don't blame her. Beforehand there was just a floor to sleep on, which she did, but she has to come and sit down here at certain times of the day. Like today, because mum and dad are out, and if I leave her up in the main house, she screams which is annoying to the neighbours. So she's down in here in the sewing room with me. Although currently at the moment, she's not in her bed. So fingers crossed she'll get in there in a minute. I have brought down my laptop and I'm going to do a live stream, a private one, and I'm gonna give the link to a couple of people to test it for me and see how that goes because I would like to start doing the live hangouts on Sundays again. So fingers crossed it works. I'm getting over my fear of it not working and then not knowing what to do about it. So I'm going to at least try and see, see how we go. I have also got my large order from net printers i have been buying pdf patterns and i haven't had any printed in quite a long time because i've just got so many patterns to go through but we've we've established this <laughs> pattern buying fabric buying and sewing are three separate hobbies i bought the itch to stitch knitting top it had nothing to do with the fabric that the sample was made up in i mean i really like the top but the sample was just like I think I need that. So I bought that one and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a whole bunch printed at the same time because postage is pretty much a flat rate, I think. So I was just like, yeah, let's let's do it. So I've had about £50 worth of patterns printed. Funnily enough, one of the tops that I haven't had printed is the knitting top because I couldn't work out how to separate the pages because I only need to get a certain cup size printed for me and the a0 was six pages long for all the different cup sizes and obviously I don't need all the different cup sizes so I need to work out how to just isolate the one page that I need to then send that off because I don't want to pay for all six to be done. Fingers crossed these are easy to identify. Some of them will be and as we've learned in the past some of them are not but yes they should be. I've got my file folders here which I will try and link in the description box down below. I get them from Amazon and I usually pay around £35 for 50 I did manage to get an absolute bargain on some fluorescent green ones which was £15 for 50 After I'd bought that one set they went up to 75 quid. So uh, yeah, um, every now and again I'll sort of like hunt through and have a look and see which is the cheapest colour. The last time it was this green one. So the first pattern I have here is a grasser pattern and it is is dress 799 so i write that on my file folder i love this pattern so it curly or it's so curly on instagram has made this and it looks absolutely stunning on her and she's also hacked it into a t-shirt as well which looks amazing and she's working on another pattern at the moment turning a dress the versi dress into a bomber jacket and it looks so so cool i have that pattern i didn't have it printed because i kind of thought i got it got to the point where it's like i want to get patterns printed that i'm going to make sort of immediately two pages for the 799 dress not sure when i'm going to get to that I mean, we are coming into, it's June now, so technically the end of spring, beginning of summer, and it's cold, wet, and grey outside, so it, I might get to this one sooner than I thought I would, or sooner than I would like to have to. Next, we've got the black snail waistcoat pattern that the very lovely Jennifer got me for my pattern swap for Christmas. Let's just make sure I've got three pattern pieces here. So again, I'll write it on my, I'm going to make an, I bought, I've brought my file of facts down so that I can start organising organizing myself. I'm going to write a list. I, uh, I have a, a folder on my laptop desktop of all the pictures I need to print out for the patterns, that, the envelopes that haven't got pictures on them at the moment, so the ones that I've been making recently. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go through the sew-alongs that are outstanding on Patreon and pull all those patterns out so that I can start working on those. Yeah, I'm trying to get myself organised. 
I would be filming today but mum wanted to be in the sewing room she's currently at B&Q with dad which is why I'm dog sitting and if you can hear the whining in the background Susie's doing that high-pitched whine that she's like I want my mum and dad you will not do but um I'm gonna have to make do mum is going to be in his sewing later today so I couldn't have the room for filming all day so I'm going to be doing that on Monday even though I did get my eyelashes done yesterday so to, uh, Monday is going to be my filming day so I will take over the sewing room, move furniture around and get it to a configuration so that I can film in the corner. Those of you guys were recommending like backdrops and sheets to go over the over the fabric so that I can film. I'm thinking that the corner spot is actually going to be the best place for me to film. I do like the idea of backdrops and that was something that I was planning on doing but there is nowhere to secure it like on, a, on one of the like official rolls. There's no wall space up the top that's free to put like a roll a roller blind system up i don't want to just pin it to the top of my furniture because i don't want to put any more footholds in the furniture than i have to so i do like the idea it was something that i was thinking about doing but i think given how i mean i'm not a minimalist person if i need to i think dad's painting all of the fences in the back garden black which is going to be brilliant for a backdrop because all of my stuff's so colorful so i think i i i'll play around with it I, it is going to be a work in pro progress basically so yeah as you guys know when i was organizing this place i went through and printed out all the pictures for the fronts of these folders and i want to keep on top of it and not let it get away from me like i did last time so that i don't have i think it was 80 to print out so uh, yeah i want to try and keep on top of it right next we have it's a pattern union and I printed out two of those. It's the Cora blouse. Yeah, Cora blouse, yes. So pattern union, Cora blouse. I have, I think my, no, I, I think I've got three pattern union patterns in here. I really liked all the options on this one and I can, again, this is gonna be quite a fun one to trial. Next, we've got the How To Do Fashion Danmark top. I think this is a free pattern, I think. Then we've got the Pattern Union Phoebe Flounce Top. Then we've got the French Poetry Leo Dress. I think this was their latest release. I absolutely love French Poetry and I haven't made a single thing from them, but I'm gonna rectify that this summer. I love the Etoile Dress, I love the Leo Dress, I love the Pleiades Dresses. I love the loon dress. All of them, apart from the loon dress, I'd want to make longer and all the other dresses, they're too short for me as is, but it'll be really easy just to add length to the skirt. So I'm definitely want to get at least one of the French poetry dresses made up this summer. We've got the DP Studios drape top, which I am very excited about. This was a very lovely pattern swap present this Christmas and I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. And as you can see, I have many, many fabrics back here that are gonna work for it. Okay, so next we've got the Pattern Union Edith smock dress and top. This is a really different style for me, but I saw it on their Instagram and I saw it belted and it was just like, yeah, done, I love that. And this is also, the layout cutting guide on this is a zero waste cutting guide, I think. They have the smocking details and then embroidery details for the yoke around the neckline as well. So I'm not sure that I will be doing the embroidery. Hand embroidery has never really appealed to me. I think that the overall concept is beautiful and I, I want to try it because I'm trying to try different silhouettes and things so that I'm not constantly making the same thing over and over again because that could get very boring for you guys although i would be very very happy with that as we know i i have one of those minds where if i find something that i like i buy it in every color or make it in every print as it were next we've got the pattern scissors cloth isosceles t-shirt i don't know if i'm cool enough to pull this off i i really like the idea of this t-shirt it's a t-shirt with just built up shoulders it has shoulder pads in it i have seen it on lots of people i think it looks gorgeous as i've been saying recently i am a huge fan of bianca from the closet historian and she made a point i trod on her toe she got underfoot right so i'm gonna try with the dog on the lap and see if that stops the high-pitched whining what was i saying yeah bianca closet historian she made the point recently that building up the shoulders or kind of not building up the shoulders but certain uh, sleeve lengths and shoulder types can make the figure look way more hourglass which is something that I'm striving for. I'm definitely pear shaped now. I used to be hourglass. <laughs> I'm definitely a pear shaped now. Um, I mean that's a it's a stupid term because you know nobody's a fruit. I'm a shan shape but 
it's a term that's easily recognisable. There's lots of different t-shirts like this on the market at the moment with um, shoulder pads and stuff built into them. I saw the isosceles t-shirt, I think it probably again was on Sew It Curly. I hope I've got her Instagram name right. Hi. Yes. It just looked really cool on her. I don't know if I'm cool enough to pull it off, but I want to give it a try, so I've got this one. Oh, and that was the last one because this is the second part of the DP Studios drape top. So I put that in that. So I got nine patterns printed and it was a total of £53, including passage, which, you know, that's... Uh, I would rather... Do you want to be... Dead? Okay, there you go. I'm covered in ginger fluff now. Yeah, she keeps trying to stand on the foot pedal. Don't do that. I mean, the machine's off, that's fine, but yeah. I would rather spend that money having them printed on A0 so that I can just trace them out rather than having to print them all out myself at home, stick them together to then trace out. And yes, I do trace my PDF patterns as well. It's a habit that I've gotten into. It was by hand London had put it on their Anna sew along on their on their blog post they made the point that patterns are expensive and tracing off your size would allow you to use the pattern again in the future and I'm very glad I'm very 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 glad that they kind of put that it's something that I'd never even thought about so I'm glad that they put that habit into my head hopefully you'll be seeing at least one or two of these very soon so the, the two t-shirts in here you will definitely be seeing soon so I'm gonna put these I don't know where I'm going to put these. I have a feeling that the what I'm going to try and do is whittle down the fabric stash so that there are fewer cubby holes taken up by fabric that will then get taken over by patterns because I do have very little room for more patterns to be added. So that's that's the plan eventually to um to work my way so that my stash kind of gets smaller and um gets taken over by pattern storage. Somebody asked me the other day if I sell the things that I make and the answer is no. I Everything that I make is my size to fit me for me to keep. This is my entire fabric stash for me, behind me as well. Yes, I have a lot. Nobody needs this much. I know that. I don't have the biggest stash out there. I certainly don't have the smallest stash out there. And as I mentioned earlier, fabric buying is a completely separate hobby to sewing. And it's something that I do enjoy. I don't have many hobbies. Yeah, in fact, sewing, pattern collecting and fabric collecting are my hobbies. I do do paper crafting, but I haven't done that in years and I really want to get back into it. But at the moment I am fully bitten by the sewing bug and this is my full-time job. I am a full-time YouTuber so this is how I make money is making videos which is why I make so much stuff and why I have so much stuff. You don't need this much stuff to be a YouTuber <laughs> at all. I'm not saying that you do. This is just how I choose to spend my time and my money. It makes me really happy. I do have a large wardrobe. I clear it out frequently. I have recently just dropped off many many bags of me made clothes to the local charity shop. Uh, for them to hopefully sell on to new homes and for people to love in a second life. This is the thing, I could, I could very easily make many repetitions of a few patterns that I have found and that I love. They wouldn't go anywhere and I have, there's certain patterns um, that I've made up and that are in my wardrobe and that I'm never going to get rid of, like the 8577s, the Eve dresses, the 9357s, those kind of things. There are patterns that I try you have a very wet nose. There are patterns that I try that I don't necessarily absolutely adore, but I'm really glad that I've tried them. And those ones I will pass on to charity. So I do clean my wardrobe out really, really frequently. It's pretty much, I think, 95% me made at the moment, which again is something that I love. I very, very rarely buy ready to wear clothes anymore. And it's usually because the fabric is just so fabulous that I'm like, I will get that and I will try and alter it so that it fits me better. I have a much larger wardrobe than anyone needs, I have a much larger collection of stuff than anyone needs, but it's things that make me happy. Clothes have always made me happy, I've always had large wardrobes. I've always done jobs where I've had to wear a uniform as well, so it's not like, oh, running out of time. So yes, battery, uh, no, memory card was getting full. So yes, I've always had jobs where I've had to wear a uniform in, in the past as well. I don't Think, oh no, I've had a couple of jobs where I've been able to wear my own clothes, but the majority of jobs that I've had have been uniformed jobs. So the kind of clothes that I make tend to be very sort of 
dressed up and not office appropriate kind of clothes because I've never had to work in that environment when I've been sewing. I go through a lot of clothes, I go through a lot of fabric, I go through a lot of patterns and it is because that I do this full time and you know this is my job and I love it. I've never been a min minimalist, I've always been a maximalist. I like things, I like colour, I like patterns, although <laughs> I'm wearing planes today but yeah I it, it's just what makes me happy and that is why I have what I do and I make as much as I do so hopefully that's answered that question so I'm gonna put this one down hopefully she'll go to sleep in her bed <laughs> although I'm not hopeful and uh, I'm gonna get on with sewing the 5895 shirts I have two of those left then I need to put a zipper in the grace bodice lining that I've cut out and sewn up to you just to double check the fit on me once those are done i can then put the sewing table away and in fact no what i'm going to do is hem all of the skirt the, the circle skirts that have been dropping over here so that when i film on monday everything will be finished and then on tuesday next week i will start my next tracing and cutting out marathon for the next batch of sewing which is going to be really exciting so i'm going to put this one in her bed hopefully she'll settle and we'll get on with some sewing good morning lovely peeps happy saturday so i actually got both shirts finished yesterday at around about half past 11 at night and I, when i looked at the time i thought oh all i've got left to do is open up the buttonholes and sew on the buttons but when like I say when I looked at the time it was half past 11 and I decided that you know a good sort of 45 minutes of hand sewing well probably not even that long good half hour of hand sewing was not the one and I finished the movie I was watching what was I watching I watched Hancock and Spider-Man Far From Home yesterday both of these have their buttonholes they just need to be fray checked opened up and the button sewn on which is what I'm going to do this morning then I am going to start hemming all of the circle skirts that are hanging up over there. It looks like the shirt dress, the Flamingo Habitat fabric hasn't dropped on the bias but the cotton lawn has, which isn't surprising because the cotton lawn I use for lining is a looser weave. The pink skirt of the dress, the B8630, had to drop massively, which is not a surprise and the as you know the lining of the cream skirt has dropped but the outer hasn't and as far as i can see the navy butterfly fabric hasn't dropped either so there's some leveling to do and then some actual sewing to do as well that'll be all of my cutout projects done so nine projects complete so yeah i tested out the internet yesterday and it will work for hangouts by the looks of things which is great i'm not going to be doing a hangout this sunday because i have nothing to do sewing wise at the desk it i'm going to need to start tracing and cutting out again whilst they kind of work for hangouts i don't want it to be my first hangout i would much rather be sitting down and trying to sew <laughs> trying to sew yeah i'm not going to do a hangout this weekend i will be doing one next weekend which is very exciting and given the rate that these videos are getting uploaded you might know about that already so yeah that's that's exciting i do need to try and find some of those little baggies for my buttons because i've started taking them off of these cards so i can see them next to the project and then they're just going back in loose and i just i really don't want that box to get disorganized again because it took forever to sort it out last time that is my plan for this morning is sewing on buttons and opening up buttonholes i will show you what these guys look like tried on i put the buttonholes five eighths of an inch away from the front edge which is what i've done with the shirt dress as well rather than the kind of like inch that the pattern suggested <laughs> So uh, yeah, hopefully these won't be quite so tight. And I'm thinking I have a whole bunch of little alteration projects of stuff that's hanging up in my wardrobe. So the 9357 out of the Lisa Chandler fabric, it is a little bit gapy here because I've been fussed around with the bodice on that one so much. I made it fit at the waist and the darts aren't too pointy, but yeah, it ended up being a little gapy here. So I just need to unpick the arm seams so that I, or armhole seams so that I can just nip it in a little bit. This denim skirt actually I've got the zipper going all the way up to the waistband through the waistband and I want to take the waistband off cut a new one and I do have some of this denim in here somewhere. I want to cut a new waistband out put different interfacing in it because this does get a little kind of ridge in it which I don't like and make it so that it's a hook and bar one so I need to do that. But there's the 7961 I think it is 
With the open back, I want to open up the back and put rouleau loops in so that I can button up that back fully rather than just a hook and eye at the top and the bottom because that doesn't work for me. Although I'm thinking I might be lazy and not completely open it up and put rouleau loops on some black twill tape that I have and sew that to the back opening because I think it'll just it'll look just as nice, I think. Maybe I, oh, I don't know, I don't know. If I have to open it all up, I have to open up this, the waist seam and go in through and unpick and stuff. So yeah, and we all know how much I hate alterations. So the easier they are, the better. So yeah, I have quite a few little tweaks to make to things in my wardrobe so that they get worn more often. As I've just mentioned, I hate doing alterations. It's something that I've been putting off and putting off and putting off and I just think it would be a really good idea. Probably none of them are gonna take me a very long time so it would be a good idea to get dedicate a couple of days to it and just do those things so that I wear those items of clothing more often because they're all really nice items of clothing that I don't wanna get rid of. At some point I'm gonna do that. But first, buttons. One eternity later. Okay, I have assigned the buttons onto my shirt. This is the Flamingo Habitat one. I went for the same little square turquoise buttons that I used on the shirt dress, which is here. I have hemmed this. I just need to, I've, I've sewn the bias binding on, I just need to hand stitch that down and I have machine hemmed the lining of this. I have hemmed the pink dress the white skirt and the navy dress as well so I've been very busy today. I have um, tried on the, the white or the cream skirt and I don't think I like it. I've actually filmed this little bit showing you these shirts before with the cream skirt on. Not that I think that they particularly go although it does with this one because the background of this is cream rather than white but the a bed of roses background is white but I have, I'm waiting to see the footage back. I don't think that skirt looks very good on me, unfortunately. It clings to every lump and bump, and uh, yeah, it may may never see the light of day, which is sad. I, I think if I'd have had enough to cut out a half circle skirt or this skirt, for example, I think I would be much happier with it. But because it's a narrow A-line skirt from the Butterick 6380, dress it's just the combination of fabric and skirt I don't think work but I'm who knows you may be seeing me with this shirt on with a completely different skirt so I'm gonna wait till I see the footage back but I think that skirt may be getting donated straight away which is sad but never mind it's good to experiment there is nothing else that I would want to make with that fabric I, I do want to make a waistcoat with what I've got left and I can still do that but there's that I wouldn't have been able to make another skirt with what I've got left of the fabric is what I'm roundabout trying to say and they don't have any more of it more of it available on Sherwood fabrics that I can see I haven't checked for a while but I will check again because I do really like it and it looks great in the dress with the really full skirt but this just slightly narrower skirt not quite right but I love the shirt the shirt is great so I'm going to show you the bed of roses shirt then I'm going to say good night because I've got lots of hand hemming to do and I'm going to go and sit with Chi whilst I do that and here is my bed of roses shirt again I really like this this is a quilting cotton so this one is slightly stiffer than the previous two I've made I made two of these in quilting cotton the first time around that I made it. I like it but I think I do prefer it in the cotton lawn, uh, this like the cotton lawn fabric. It's it's slightly, I don't know, it's it's quite, gets quite thick at the back of the neck as well because there's there's quite a lot of fabric going on in there. There's the shirt, the body of the shirt, the double pieces of the collar and the facing so it can get quite thick back there so in the cotton lawn it's slightly more forgiving but I've trimmed all the seams to within an inch of their life in this one so I think it works and I think it's really pretty and I really like it with this skirt I like it a lot more with this skirt than I do with the cream skirt and again I don't know if you're going to have seen the cream skirt because I think it was kind of atrocious I am really pleased with both of these there will be more of them I love them I think they're great they look great with this skirt it's the kind of like silhouette that I like. I can easily get my cardigans over the top of them. The kind of grown on sleeves are a little bit restrictive but not not in such a bad way that I, I won't wear this. I do kind of fancy maybe trimming a little bit off but I have decided that I'm going to try and amalgamate the tie part of this with the 9345 from Vogue and see because I love that bodice 
and I do want to work out how to lengthen it into a, sh into a kind of like a this length shirt but I also think that the bodice itself at this length with a little tie on the front would be really interesting so I'm going to try and add the tie kind of weird sort of portion of this little front piece and the facing onto the 9345 and see if I can amalgamate those because that way I can have another shirt which doesn't have quite so much bulk in the back of the collar so I can make it out of these slightly thicker cottons and it also is a, a, won't, I can do it sleeveless or have the short sleeves on it as well so I'm going to play around with that in my tracing session which is going to start tomorrow which is exciting. As I mentioned I've hemmed everything else so I'm going to take it all to the, back to the main house, sit with Chi while I have some food, get everything hemmed and then tomorrow it will be tracing. No, I still need to put a zip in the, in the grey stress bodice to just test the fit on that. If it needs tweaking I can cut the tweaked pieces out of the cotton lawn here sew it up and try it on again and then I'm going to put the sewing machine away and start tracing out all of the stuff and cutting out some things as well for my next batch of things to make so yeah I'm really pleased I think these nine things have been a success the trouser muslin definitely needs some tweaking but I'm going to get there with that the cream skirt as I say I'm not sure it looks good on me but as a skirt it is a very nice skirt and the rest of it the dresses and the shirts I am really really pleased with so yay it's been a good I think it's been a week maybe eight nine days since I started doing all that but it's been so much fun being able to sew again for sure I've really really enjoyed it and as you guys have said it's really kind of noticeable how much my mood has picked up which is not surprising so yay very happy to be sewing again so on that note I am going to say goodnight I hope you've enjoyed my day and I will see you all tomorrow bye